is Nahir, and what I have set up here is uh, just a little pixel art platformer demo using the Eclipse Light Engine, which is an asset for a game maker. And people have asked, like, what what Eclipse would look like uh, when it's doing lighting for a pixel art instead of just those giant PBR high resolution textures. And you see, it looks pretty nice. Um, got a little mouse light here. I can look at all the contours of the normal maps and how things look. Uh, it's just kind of for demonstration purposes. Then these uh, these sprites I got off like it was a uh, on itch.io. I found a free pack demo. Um, I'll have a link to the creator because I think they do some really nice work. And I took those sprites and I generated normal maps from them. And then from the normal maps, I generated material maps when using the uh, PBR material packer. And I'll include a link to that as well because it's it's a pretty nice little tool I made. You can use it for a lot of different things. Um, see, it looks pretty nice. Uh, I got some emissive particles with these torches, and you can see the sun's been going up and down. Uh, it's set to like 30 seconds, so that's why it's going so fast. Uh, we can look at the, the room real quick. Um, the big difference with the pixel art stuff is I use a lot more tile maps, of course. And like we can look here, Let's zoom in. I got a back layer. Then the, it draws some of the stuff in the middle, and then it has a front layer. And in the light engine itself, you just have to tell it like where the the normals and the materials begin and end. And or if you just put a single layer, that's fine. It'll just because it, what it does is it puts layer scripts onto those layers to set a surface to draw the normals and to draw the materials. So if you put two of them, it's going to treat them as a begin and an end. And if you put one of them, it's just going to do it on the single layer. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, which is begin and which is end, because it goes by depth. So it's going to check which one's highest, which one's lowest. So it's pretty convenient. So we got the front and the back. And you can see the front here. Uh, another cool thing is if you were to place, like, say, this. Zoom in. If you were to place this. You would have to place the normals like that, and on the next layer, you would need to place the material. But what I did, uh, instead of having to duplicate stuff like that, I think it's kind of tedious and pointless because they're all the exact same index. So all you have to do is place just, just the albedo, and then over here, I created these little objects, called it a tile material copier. And what it does is it takes a base layer, you just give it the string name of whatever the layers are, and it takes the base one and it copies the tile data of, of that one into the other two, uh, assuming they exist. If they don't exist, the object gives up, you know, you gotta put the right name in and that, that's about it. But that way you don't have to actually place the normal and material tiles at all. They just, they do have to exist as in they have to be a tile map in the room, but that's about it. Uh, for assets, I might add that too, like a thing that right now the assets are just manually placed. As you can see, it's just for these trees really. Um, see there's the normal maps for the trees and you know, the materials for the trees and that cave. But, um, you know, asset layers are really useful and you can do the exact same thing as well as get the information. Um, I'd have to fiddle with it too because I think assets, you want, the reason that I'm even using assets is because you can, you can layer them. It, tiles will cancel each other out. They'll just overwrite whatever tile they're on. So you can't, you would have to make multiple tile maps. So it's a lot easier to just place a tree and, and be done with it. But I might make a duplicator too, so you don't even have to place the the normal maps like that right there. So depends. Um, and then the, the player, like I said, I had that free asset pack that I found. So there was the base sprite, and I used the base sprite to generate this normal map using a, an online program. And then from that, I generated this material map, which is, that is using the PBR material packer. So, so look, at the, look at the project real quick again. Um, there'll be a compiled version to download, and you can check it out, run around, swing a sword. I, I, there's, I guess there's some enemies too. I, maybe I'll add them sometime. Set up some hitboxes. Uh, it's, it's just a basic platformer. It uses tile maps for collision. Uh, I can see where's the tile map. There you go. It's just got a basic collision tile map. 
Uh, it's got my own little tile collision system that's ever since they updated some of the internal values with bounding boxes there's been just some slight discrepancies and then so I sat down and came up with arguably a, a better tile map collision solution that doesn't even touch the bounding box it's it's completely decoupled from the uh, character the instance variables and stuff not so it's it's like it's it's just a struct that does everything for you it's really convenient uh, it also does, uh, it deals with if your character's bounding box is smaller than the tile, it, it handles that no problem. So it's pretty nice. And it doesn't, I've seen some where they check along the edge of the tile, like the whole edge. It doesn't do that. It, it has a faster way of doing that. So it's really nice. Uses math. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, there'll be a download. You can check it out, see what you think of it. Uh, thanks for watching.